All these problems like PMS, PCOS, balding, low muscle mass, it could be erectile dysfunction, it could be depression, anxiety, BPD, facial attractiveness, weight, you name it. Every single one of these factors actually has one thing in common. Yep, that's right. And believe me, you don't want to be the bald guy, especially because... uh. <laughs> Now, this is where cholesterol comes into play. And yes, cholesterol is very, very important because even though it is very misunderstood and always actually demonized, you might have guessed that a lot of people have every single one of those problems that I mentioned today. And yes, that means balding, PCOS, and all these other things actually aren't normal. Yeah, that's right. They're not normal. And there's a whole lot of other things that aren't normal. And they're actually all related to cholesterol in one way or another. Now, in order to explain this, we're gonna first use an analogy, and then afterwards, I'll be going over the science behind why exactly cholesterol is so important, and you'll see that it actually links directly in with the analogy. So the analogy is, look at your body as a city, and cholesterol is pretty much the wheels on all of these cars in that city. Now, you take a guess. What happens when you remove the wheels from all of those cars? That's right, they don't become cars anymore. What about all the wheels from the school buses? Maybe even the ambulances? Maybe even the trucks? Every single one of those vehicles ceases to work and just doesn't work anymore because it doesn't have wheels and it doesn't have tires. Well, that's pretty much exactly what cholesterol is. It's actually almost no different for that matter. Now, hormones, specifically the sex steroid hormones, actually have a lot of things in common. More specifically, most of them, almost all of them, are actually made from one precursor. And that, yes, is what I mentioned before. That is cholesterol. And as you can see, this is the cholesterol hormone synthesis cascade. And yes, it is essential and it is necessary in order to make all of those hormones that you might need. And those hormones could be things like estrogen, the three kinds of estrogen, estrone, estradiol, estriol, it could be testosterone, specifically testosterone and DHT, two androgens. It could be allopregnenolone and pregnenolone, which allopregnenolone is very important in mood regulation, and pregnenolone is very important for women during pregnancy. It could even be, I mean, you name it, aldosterone, it could be cortisol and corticosterone. Basically, that whole problem of anxiety. Yeah, that's from cortisol. So once again, all of these relate to specifically cholesterol one way or another. And in order to get rid of these problems, we have to understand how exactly we can basically prevent all of this from happening and why exactly cholesterol, specifically the form that we need, is in animals and we need to eat a lot more of it. Now we're gonna be going over each one of these hormones and their functions, and then you'll be able to see just why exactly these hormones are absolutely essential, especially when it comes to regulating mood or every single one of these other things. So first, let's start off with DHT and testosterone. Now we already know that DHT and testosterone, more specifically, DHT is very important for men being able to grow facial hair futures or just hair in general. And what happens when you remove that? Suddenly, lo and behold, that's right, you end up getting bald. And that's why we already know DHT is linked to baldness. And testosterone is very important in male characteristics like muscle mass. And what happens when we remove testosterone? Yep, that's right, muscle mass decreases. And there's plenty of others because it doesn't end there. What about the estrogens, estrone, estradiol, and estriol? Well, we already know that the three estrogens are very, very essential for women developing. So for instance, this could be hips being developed correctly. It could be the breast being developed correctly. It could even be a lack of them or incorrect versions of them leading to cancers. Yes, that is not what you want either. You do not want ovarian cancer or breast cancer. And yes, this can come from a phytoestrogen or even a microplastic. And this is because they mimic estrogen. Next, we'll be covering pregnenolone and allopregnenolone. Now, allopregnenolone is very important in mood regulation. And yes, this could be one of the factors which contributes to women getting moody during that menstrual 
menstrual cycle. However, actually those symptoms aren't normal. In fact, women shouldn't be getting them if they have enough cholesterol and yes, and if it's all balanced. And there are many examples of other women who have solved their problems by actually increasing their cholesterol intake. And not only that, they basically went carnivore. And Pregnenolone specifically is very, very important in regulating whether or not the fetus uh, during development, development of the fetus is actually like healthy or going to be attacked by the mother's own immune system. So once again, both of these are very, very important. And in fact, allopregnenolone doesn't just affect women, by the way, when it comes to moodiness, it also affects men. So yeah. Once again, this can be a very, very key future in determining whether or not you are or aren't moody. Now, after allopregnenolone and pregnenolone, we will be covering aldosterone. Now, aldosterone is very important in regulating blood pressure, and you might hear that, oh my God, you need to lower your cholesterol in order to actually prevent this uh, blood pressure from being so high. Well, actually, instead of doing that, you could do something much simpler, which is Eating salt, yes, that's right, eating salt will give you the exact same result. And why is that exactly? Because you are one, stimulating atrial natriuretic peptide, which is very beneficial for the heart. And not only that, you, as long as you get enough water with the salt, then you will actually be able to retain that water. And more specifically, your blood pressure won't rise due to aldosterone increasing. So this is once again, just easier to get salt instead. So why exactly would you take a lot of these pharmaceutical drugs to get the exact same result? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> and next we'll be coming to the glucocorticoids, meaning cortisol and corticosterone. Now you might already heard of cortisol being very a determinant factor in anxiety. And yes, exactly. And how exactly do you think you can stimulate that cortisol? That's right, you eat carbohydrates. Now, if you wanna increase your anxiety, then I recommend you just crank up the carbohydrates because that will be a surefire way to really heighten that anxiety because you're heightening the amount of cortisol. So once again, this all comes down to hormones. And if you have, correct balances of these hormones, then you won't have any of these problems that I mentioned before. But if your hormones are imbalanced one way or another, because hormones can be very easily imbalanced, in fact, it's a domino effect and all it takes is a little bit of one to be damaging a little bit of another and then it's this cascading effect where one produces a little bit less of this and then a little bit less of this and then a little bit less of this and it's just over and over and over again. And that is not what you want. Now, how exactly can we balance all of these and what can we do? Now, the way that we can do this is first, reduce carbohydrate intake to zero carbohydrates if possible, because yes, that is possible. I am living proof as well as many of the other women that I've mentioned before. And not only can you lower uh, carbohydrate intake, you should also increase the fat and cholesterol intake, meaning yes, all of that fatty meat and all of those eggs and pretty much everything that you can think of that's meaty and eggy, you want that, <laughs> or buttery, you want that. Yes, now you might say, well, that's not true because that's actually very unhealthy and we already know that LDL, more specifically VLDL cholesterol is absolutely crucial in causing heart attacks. And this is where we come to false science, yes. But how exactly is that possibly true? Now, first let's look at what exactly cholesterol, more specifically, what exactly is LDL and VLDL? Well, LDL and VLDL are just low density lipoprotein and very low density lipoprotein. More specifically though, LDL basically carries cholesterol. We already know it is the carrier molecule for cholesterol. And remember, we do know quite a bit on just how important cholesterol is because it is essential for all of the functions that I mentioned before. And VLDL, more specifically, very low density lipoprotein, actually is just the carrier molecule for triglycerides. Now it's actually supposed that VLDL is the real contributor to atherosclerosis. And I'm here to say that yes, VLDL is, but however, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And the only way that you can get that VLDL, more specifically, all of these VLDL particles sticking to the endothelium is only if you damage the endothelium, which you can easily do if you eat meat with carbohydrates, and that has to do with the Randall cycle and the insulin to glucagon ratio. And if you're interested in that, then I recommend you check out this video because I talk 
all about it in that video. So yeah, once again, this is not actually fully true, but what about LDL? I thought LDL is still unhealthy though. Even VLDL I know is bad, but isn't LDL supposed to be bad as well? Well, actually it's a little bit more complicated than that. More specifically, it's because that we already know that the Minnesota Coronary Heart Survey actually measured this already. In fact, this study was supposed to be the crowning jewel to prove that LDL cholesterol is bad for you. And it turns out that this study was also funded by the exact same study and many other studies as to, hey, you know, it turns out we proved that LDL cholesterol is actually bad for you with no results whatsoever, by the way. Yes, all of those studies basically had no results. And this was supposed to be the crowning jewel because it was in such a well-controlled environment and everything was pretty much exactly perfect. And they found the exact opposite result. It turns out that lowering LDL cholesterol using all of these seed oils and polyunsaturated fats did actually work because you can lower cholesterol. However, it did seem to increase all cause mortality by 22%. Hmm, interesting. You know, I wonder why that is because if we look at what the functions of LDL cholesterol are, it almost looks like they're so essential to producing every single one of those sex steroid hormones that I mentioned before. Hmm. So it turns out lowering the amount of carriers that could actually ca carry that cholesterol is very important in causing your death because you increase all-cause mortality by 22% because you can't produce the hormones that you need. So once again, this is an absolutely absurd claim. And if you're really interested in following the money and seeing just how corrupt all this is, then I recommend you check out this video because this video really explains it goes into a lot of detail and it might be a little bit repulsive, but it will explain very, very quickly just why exactly all of this is, oh my God, LDL is so bad. And it's actually the biggest scam in history for that matter. It's um, it's quite profitable. They're selling you both the cure, which is healthcare, and they are selling you the poison, which is the food that you're eating. Pretty insane. Now, even though cholesterol is very important for every single one of these hormones, there is another thing that I actually didn't necessarily cover yet. In fact, I haven't covered in a lot of my videos for that matter. And that is iodine. Now, iodine is very important and there's a couple reasons why it's very important. But in this case, in terms of thyroid hormone, specifically T3, T3 is actually the required step and needed to make any certain amount of maybe testosterone or estrogen because whenever you move from one step to the other in the cholesterol hormone synthesis cascade as i mentioned before that is actually dictated by t3 yes so that means you need enough iodine now this i actually haven't covered before but it's very very important now i personally actually do take uh iodine myself I take uh, potassium iodide. Uh, it's usually in the form of Lugol's. And that is, once again, that is very, very important for hormone function. Now, this might actually explain the problem and the reason behind why some people have low testosterone, uh, even on carnivore for that matter. And yeah, it's because it's essential. Once again, iodine is actually very, very essential. And it's not just essential when it comes to the cholesterol synthesis cascade for that matter. It's also important for cholesterol when it comes to basically vitamin D synthesis and vitamin D metabolism. And that's a really, really big deal because yeah, that's right. How exactly are you supposed to get vitamin D if you're in the winter all the time? Like if you're the Inuit, for instance, that's right. You can't really get much vitamin D because lo and behold, the sun's always being covered. So how exactly do they do it? Yeah, that's right. Well, they don't have this problem and that's because they eat the fat from the meat once again. And this is very, very important when it comes to understanding why exactly you don't really need to go out in the sun that much when, when it comes to vitamin D. Is it helpful? It can be helpful, yes. But in terms of vitamin D metabolism, once again, you, it needs iodine and it needs cholesterol. So those two things are very, very important. So there are a couple key takeaways. First off, cholesterol is essential for hormone production of the body and pretty much all of those sex steroid hormones that I mentioned before. And hormonal imbalances can end up leading to tons and tons of health issues, as we already know, based on the 
amount of LDL being lowered increases all-cause mortality by 22%, meaning you don't want to be lowering your LDL cholesterol. That isn't healthy. Many, many common health problems today, it could be anxiety, it could be depression, it could be BPD, it could be acne. Yes, acne is one that I did forget to mention, but acne could be it. It could be PMS and PCOS pain. It could be balding. It could be lack of muscle mass. All of this, once again, is comes down strictly to cholesterol again. Yes, it is very important. And without enough cholesterol, these problems will definitely occur one way or another. I don't know which one it'll be, but there's a very good chance it's going to be one of them. We already know that LDL isn't actually damaging. In fact, the only thing that LDL is, isn't even a cholesterol. It is the carrier molecule for cholesterol itself. The historical studies, more specifically all these studies that are trying to say that LDL is bad actually have already been bought out. And we know this because the Minnesota Coronary Heart Survey is the best example of a study funded by the exact same people, except it gave the exact opposite result. And it's results were published 45 years later because the authors didn't like it. And all of the funding was suddenly cut from the study. And yes, that's because the results didn't match what the actual companies wanted. A diet very, very high in fats and basically cholesterol, if you get it closer to carnivore, the better your results will be and the better your health will be. Yes, once again, that is very, very important because meat is essential, not just because of cholesterol, but because a whole other myriad of reasons. Now, if you found this video interesting and you want to know more about the carnivore diet and why exactly it is healthy, or maybe why you think that there could be some counter arguments or maybe some questions that you have about it, then I recommend you check out my science behind carnivore playlist where I cover all of this. And I really do mean every single bit of the science behind it. And there are many, many claims and many accusations as to the carnivore diet is bad because of this, this, and this. And once again, I debunk every single one of those claims. And not only that, I go even one step further and show actually how carnivore is essential, not just to your well being, but also especially if if you're an adolescent, which I do come out with, I am planning to come out with videos on that as well, because adolescents are extremely, extremely reliant on high nutrients. And without these high nutrients, really bad things can happen, like being much shorter. Yes, height is not genetic. And not only that, having a less attractive face, yes, attractiveness of the face is very dependent on nutrition. And it is very, very dependent on the master muscle and a lot of other things. So once again, if you're interested, then I recommend you check out my science behind carnivore playlist and my channel. Thanks again for watching. If you found the video helpful, and you really want to learn more, then please, like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. And it really does help the channel grow. And if you really want to see my videos ahead of time, like uh, there's a lot of a lot of videos scheduled ahead of time, then I recommend you click the join button down below where you can not only see my videos ahead of time, but also support me personally as a creator. So once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Pew.